had a request recently to do a tutorial on how to draw poppies and I thought it would be fun to create a little composition with poppies, greenery, and one of my favorite little filler flowers called multiflora roses. My name is Carla and I'm an artist and educator from Ontario, Canada, here to make drawing fun and approachable for all and of course share my love of flowers with you. So let's dive in. To start, you'll need a few basic supplies, starting with paper. Here, I'll be using a Strathmore cold pressed watercolor paper, just because I love the thickness and the texture that it has. You'll need a pencil for your draft, as well as a good quality eraser, and a fine line black pen. I'll be using a Secura of America Micron in size 03. So go ahead and grab your pencil and let's start with the draft. I'm going to start with some large circles to indicate where I want the open poppy blooms to be and I'm going to add a smaller circle in the center of each one to show where the center of the flower will be. And before I have people diving into my comments to tell me that these look like boobs, um, sorry about that, I'm going to quickly add another few outlines of blooms toward the top to balance things out and start filling in where I want some smaller flower shapes to be as well as where I want the leaves to be. not adding details here, this step is really just to act as a guide for when you're working with ink. So let's start inking these flowers, starting with the center seed pod of the poppy. I'm filling in the small circle in the center of each bloom with some oval shapes that are more narrow toward the center and just filling them in all the way out around the entire pod here. I'll keep drawing these shapes until the full circle is filled in. Let me zoom in on the second one here so you can see how I've drawn them a little bit better. added a tiny line around the outside of the circle connecting any spaces where the ovals don't touch as well just to finish off the shape of the pod. Next I'm going to come in and start drawing the center stamen of the flower by filling in a halo around the center with these tiny oval shapes which will eventually be connected back to the center pod with a line. I'll keep drawing these ovals around each of the seed pods until they all have a good amount surrounding them. Don't be shy, add a bit of bulk and a few layers together until the halo is full. Next, let's come back in to the centers and add some connecting lines from the ovals back to the center pod shape we drew first. Just a quick line here, nothing fancy. We just want to make sure that the stamen is all one piece. Next, 
Next, let's start working with the petals. Poppy petals are fun to draw because the leaves are almost tissue-like in real life and have a lot of folds, curves, ridges in them. So you can have a lot of fun playing around with the shapes that you make here. Add some little bumps with another line alongside it to create a fold in the petal and make sure the outer edges aren't smooth. The one thing I really want you to make sure you do here is overlap the petals. Don't leave any big gaps between them. But other than that, just have fun with the shapes that you're creating. I'll speed up the last three flowers that I do here, but the thing that I want you to notice while I'm drawing is that the petals are imperfect, kind of wiggly, some have ridges and folds. And all of this is just created by playing around with the line that you're using. For the poppy bloom that's on an angle facing away from us, just create a smooth U shape for the bottom instead of a wavy or bumpy line to show that it is the base of the poppy. Then you want to add just a few little oval shapes since most of the stamen is covered up. On this one, um, they'll just be peeking out from behind the top of the front petal. Once you're done with that, let's start drawing the centers of the multiflora roses. Just draw a grouping of maybe six to eight little teeny tiny circles together, nothing fancy here. I know it's not really easy to see, but once the stamens or centers are in place, we'll come in and start adding some little petals. The petals are almost like an M shape or have a bit of a heart shape, and each stamen should have about five petals surrounding it. I'm also going to leave a few of these without petals, maybe two or three of them, and just add some little diamond shaped leaves on the bottom side of the stamen instead of the petals to make it look like the petals have fallen off. I think adding little touches like this helps add some contrast within the piece between the large blooms and the leaves and these smaller elements and keeps the viewer more interested in the drawing. Plus, it's fun to just play around a bit with the shapes to figure out what works and what kind of elements you like adding to your piece. The last thing that I'm going to do for these little multiflora or baby roses is add some stems to make sure that they're connected back into the piece and not just floating around. Now let's move on to outlining the poppy buds at the top of the page. Keep this really simple, just an oval shape with an extra line along either side if you want, just to show where the guard petals are, and then connect them back again to the piece with their stem so they're not floating. The last thing that we need to work on here for the outline of this piece is the leaves. I've added three or so different leaf shapes here, but they're all basically going to start in the same way with a vein down the center of the leaf. For the large leaves, draw two parallel lines that converge at the tip, surrounded by a jagged line on either side to help create a more list realistic toothed look. For the poppy leaves toward the top of the page, I'm not going to do anything really intricate here. If I wanted to spend some more time here on the line work, we could, but I wanted to show you how we can achieve the look of a poppy leaf without any fancy line work. Just draw some small, almost diamond-like leaf shapes down the center vein that we drew here and create them with tiny jagged lines. They're a similar shape to the large leaves that we drew, but just on a really small scale. Add them to either side of the vein and then we'll leave them like this until the next phase of this drawing where we just are going to add in some simple detail lines.
while I have you here, feel free to let me know in the comments what flower you'd like me to draw next and I will do my best to get to your requests. Okay, so now that the outline is done, we can start to add our detail lines to this piece. If you've watched any of my tutorials before, you'll know that I like to keep the details really simple and clean. For the petals, I concentrate the line work to the points on the leaf where a shadow would naturally fall, such as underneath any folds of the petal and toward the center of the bloom. You can add some quick lines, concentrate it toward the base of each petal, and a few broken lines that extend outwards as well. Just try as best as you can to imagine where the petals naturally might be a bit darker and add your lines there. The white space that you leave will help to create depth and the illusion that the light is hitting those spots on the petals. I'll keep it sped up a tiny bit here as we finish the petals, but if you're drawing along, please feel free to pause and take your time with this step. The main thing that I want you to take note of is how simplistic we're keeping things. There's no overlapping or cross hatching or any back and forth movements with your pen. Just some really simple clean lines placed in the right spots. From here, let's start adding the detail lines to the leaves. You'll notice that for the first leaf type, I'm using a really subtle S-curve line, starting from the center vein, extending outwards toward the outer edges, and then following the shape or curve of this first line all the way down the rest of the leaf. You can have some solid lines and some broken lines. Remember, leaving any white space or blank space on the page will help to create a curve by making it look like light is catching on those high points of the leaf.
I'm going to fill in the lines of the larger leaves in a similar way, but this time with quick lines concentrated toward the center vein of the leaf and just adding some simple lines along the edges in any areas that I want to fill in. Just try to keep your line work simple and clean. I always find that when I overwork a piece or add too many details, I'm never as happy with the final piece when it's done. Add a few little detail lines to the multiflora roses, just add two or three tiny lines concentrated toward the base of the petals or where the petals meet the stamen. Again, keep things really simple here. Now there are some visible pencil lines left behind, so I'm going to come in with my eraser and gently wipe away any lines that I can still see. Actually, while I was erasing, I noticed that I forgot to add some details to the little baby roses hiding toward the bottom center, so I'll also add a couple lines there. And once that is done, this piece is finished. Start to finish poppies, greenery, and multiflora roses, drawn with just a few simple steps with some basic, easy to find supplies. I hope you enjoyed drawing along with this video. And if you did, I would love if you could send me a picture of your creation on Instagram. You can find me at Love K Designs. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope I'll see you again in the next video. Until next time, bye bye.